Hi, I'm Mark and I'm all about psychology, tech and productivity. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you an absolute must have app for Tesla owners. And no, I'm not gonna talk about PlugShare or ZapMap or any kind of generic EV app. This one, I promise, will take your ownership experience to the next level. Let's take a look. So we've had our Model 3 for almost four months now and I've been spending some time lately testing out some of the third party apps. And you might ask, why? Well, the official Tesla app is fine. It's your car key for a start and it allows you to control most of the features in the car and schedule things like climate and charging. But there are a bunch of things that it can't do. It's not particularly well designed, in my opinion, and considering all of the data that the car generates, there's all sorts of things that you can't access through the official Tesla app. Enter. Tessie. So in this video I wanted to show you an overview of this app along with all the different features it offers along with why I think this is so much better than the official Tesla app. So much so I signed up to pay for it and you can keep watching the video for a chance to access all of the full-fledged features free for one month. So let's fire it up. This is the home screen as we can see it's got a gorgeous interface which shows the weather dynamically. At the top we have a bunch of quick access controls that you can customise including all the usual stuff from the standard Tesla app like climate, opening the boots, unlocking the charge port and so on. There are also some location and scheduling features here so you can precondition the battery and preset your charging and so on. Again so far pretty much the same features as the standard Tesla app just prettier. So now this grid system below here is where things kind of get cool. So starting with climate. So this gives you much more granular control over the climate settings, including individual heat settings, wheel heating, and defrost mode. Each of these other windows allows you to track back and export data that relates to your car. If we take a look at the battery as an example, so as well as giving you uh, a take on the current state of charge of the vehicle and the range, it estimates a real world range based on the actual energy use over the last 30 miles. So you can also click the icon in the top right there uh, to give you a status of the overall battery health over any given time frame. So I've gone for all time, but you can customize this via the list above. And this will show you the battery capacity in terms of the usable energy over the distance traveled, as well as the maximum range when the battery is charged to 100%. So as we can see here in just over 3000 miles, we've lost about four miles of usable range, it's not too bad. Now, if we take a look at the driving menu, this gives you an historic view of your driving data. Again, you can play with what time period does this over. I've gone with 30 days here. And literally every time you drive the car, it tracks all sorts of information. So you get, for example, a battery status at the start and the end of the journey, the distance traveled, the time taken, and then this is pretty cool, you know, the cost of the electric versus the comparative fuel price. So plus all these other charts, so you've got speed, elevation, battery life, range, uh, energy, the odometer reading, and then also interior and exterior temperatures. So you can also view this as a map view, which I kind of like, or you can bring it up as a given set of analytics over time. Now you can filter and export all this information and then manipulate it in whatever way you want if you're interested in gathering that kind of data and keeping it outside of the app. So previously I was tracking some of this information manually but Tessie is a really good and reliable way of capturing this data straight from the car if this is your kind of thing. So let's take a look at the charging menu. And again, this gives you a completely customizable way of looking at your charging history and the price paid for each charge. So you can set these prices by tagging particular locations in the settings. I'll show you how to do that shortly and then stating the cost. So, and again, each time it will show you kind of granular data on the charge, including how long you were charging for, the comparative fuel costs and the efficiency of the charge amongst other things. As before, you can view this as a map view if you prefer to, or as a set of analytics. So as an example, as you can see here in the last hmm, 30 days, I have charged the car 15 times, spending uh, 50 pounds to charge the car versus about 217 pounds in equivalent fuel costs. So this is really nice to have this information right at your fingertips if you ever need to quote it or mention it or brag about it. So next up we have the parking menu. This is a classic example of one of the things I was trying to track manually and having not an awful lot of luck with. So this will give you information on how much energy the car uses just from being parked up and not being charged. So your stationary costs 
of just leaving the car. Particularly in kind of cold weather conditions, you can see at a glance how much energy the car is using. So if we just take an example here, the car was parked up at five o'clock, it was uh, used again at about nine o'clock the following day, and we can see there, we actually lost about 40 pence worth of electric in that time. The car used 2.3 kilowatt hours of energy, which is equivalent to about 10 miles of range. I think that's kind of scary, but also it's good to have that data so that you can factor that in to your charging, to your driving, and to your planning when you're thinking about using the car for a, a long road trip, for example. And then finally, we have the activity tab, which is just that. A full log of everything that's happened over a given time period, which you can set in the list above. So seven days, 30 days, last hour, whatever you like. Or you can see all this data consolidated as graphs for things like battery, range, usable battery, speed, and so on. So earlier on, I mentioned that you can tag locations. Let's take a quick look at how that works in the settings up in the top left. So a garage is if you are lucky enough to own multiple Teslas, we just have the one. Uh, as we can see, it's called Mavis. Um, now the tag locations, you can set here a name, plus you can add costs per kilowatt hour if you know what the charging cost is for that particular location. So uh, as a side note, if your charging costs change for any of these locations, you can update the app and then ask it to retrospectively go through and update all of your charging history for all the different charts, graphs and analytics. I think this is a pretty cool feature. You can also then set alerts on arrival, or departure or when it's not plugged in on that location. You can also set voice controls up for all your standard voice activation services. I'm not gonna say any of them out loud here for fear of summoning that particular genie, but I can confirm they work. And finally, you can set up things like automation and widgets for Google Home or for Apple's shortcuts feature. So for example, if you only wanted your Tesla to uh, set the climate on a particular day of the week rather than every single weekday or every single weekend day. You could do that as part of the shortcuts feature in the Apple ecosystem and the app will take care of all of that for you. So as we can see, this is a really full featured app and it's absolute breeze to use. Now in terms of costs, now the app is $4.99 US a month or $49.99 per year after a 14 day free trial. But if you're interested in checking this out for yourself, you can access a 30 day free trial with all of the pro features available if you sign up via the subscription link below. And just in the interest of transparency, if you sign up via that link, I also get a full month of usage. If you do go for it, do put a comment below and let me know what you think of the app. So as always, if you've got any questions at all about this particular app, let me know in the comments below and I'll respond to each and every one. And if you're interested in hearing about my Tesla ownership experience so far, you'll find a whole playlist of Tesla content in the link at the end of the video. If you find this video helpful, please be kind, hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more like this, maybe even a cheeky subscribe. I'll see you next time.